Last night of this three-night series here on how to be a Christian. I'm not talking about how to be saved. You know how to do that, right? You trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and admit that you're a sinner and confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's how that works. But we're looking on how to be a Christian after you're saved. There's things that God wants you to do. We're going to look at tonight at some instructions. You ever get that thing when you buy something new, the first thing they tell you is, read the instructions first. Right? Here's a person who never reads the instructions first. And I have nothing but trouble. And one of the problems that I have in my Christian life is, I don't read the instructions first. Are you still here? Is this mic, is this mic on? 2 Chronicles chapter 7, look at verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. The Bible says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we would ask you for this last night here, Lord, that you'd help us to wrap this series up show us father like you have the last two nights how we're supposed to be as christians lord we are christians but sometimes we don't act like christians lord sometimes we don't talk like christians lord sometimes we don't even behave like christians but help us father we want to be christians we want to be pleasing in your sight. We want to be good and faithful servants. Now, Lord, we might have to give something up of the flesh, but, Father, help us not to be in the flesh, but to be in the Spirit. Amen. Father, I thank you and I praise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Well, the instructions go to 32, I mean, chapter 32 in the book of Psalms. Chapter 32 in the book of Psalms. Look at verse number 8. You know, it's real interesting because there are a number of Bible verses that says God will give us instruction or will instruct us. And you know what we do? We just don't pay attention. I saw a bumper sticker once. And it said, what part of thou shalt not don't you understand? God. Right? right? Like the kids come up to the parents and you tell them no five or six times and you look at them finally you go, what part of no were you clear about? That's right. I wonder if God sometimes looks down from heaven and points his finger at Ken Dean and says, how many times do I have to tell you? You really never heard that from your parents, did you? I never heard that from my father. I mean, my physical father. I heard it a couple times from my mother, but I never heard it from my father. He didn't tell me twice. He told me once. And then I did what he said. Because after the first time he had it, I didn't do what he said the first time. I learned it was better, it was much better for me to do what he said the first time. I didn't, it was, I didn't take a long time for me to learn. Some people, it takes a long time to learn. You know, there are Christians, and there might even be Christians in this church that aren't following the instructions of God. Now, you might get away with, listen now, you might get away with it down here, but you better be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. Psalm 32, verse number 8. Psalm 32, verse number 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Now, doesn't that sound like a deal there? Well, I don't know which way to go. Well, then talk to God about it. Well, I have to make a decision, preacher. Well, have you been to the Lord in prayer? No, I thought I'd come and talk to you first. Yeah. What? Don't go to me. Go to the go to the main man. Right? I mean, go to who's in charge. It's going to get worse, but we'll continue on. 
All right, let's look at this next one here. I know it's on page 2 or 3. I know it's on one of those. Okay, look at Proverbs chapter 33 or 23. Proverbs chapter 23. I was sitting in my uh, third year Greek class at school, which is always a thrill, not understanding anything they were trying to teach me, but... And uh, the Lord said, you know what you need to do? You know, I'm, I'm not saying I heard this audibly, but you know how the Lord is. And he said, you need to start, you need to preach a message about how to be a Christian. So the first thing I did, and although I've, I've altered it since then, the first thing I did, I said, well, okay, when I go to get a job, what's the first thing I need to know? Well, I better know the vocabulary, right? Right? The guy says, well, what do you know about being, working a router? A router? What's a router? You think he's going to hire me? What do you know about working a backhoe? I didn't even know there was a backhoe. <laughs> right? So the first thing I did in this message about Christianity is I had a vocabulary. You know what Christians need to know? They need to know some vocabulary of the Bible. Amen. You know what justification means? Do you know what redemption means? Do you know what atonement means? Do you know what sanctification means? And that's how it started. That's how this particular series of messages started. I don't have anything to do with anything, but I just thought I'd tell you. Okay, look at Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23, verse 12. Just trying to fill in some time, Brother Elliot. That's all. Proverbs 23, verse 12. The Bible says, Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of knowledge. Are you listening? Well, I was going to listen, but I didn't want to. Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19. A preacher said one time, and I forget who it was, it was uh, quite a long time ago, but I had read about it in a series of books about preachers, and he was preaching one time, and he said, you know the problem with Christianity is, and you know Christianity's had a problem since the beginning, you know that, don't you? And it's really had a problem with Christians. <laughs> he said the problem with Christianity is that some people think it's not important to go to church except when they want to. And he said, you got to be real careful about that because sometimes God will give a message to a preacher and if you're not there, you're just out of luck. Because you might never hear it again. And it might be the message that you needed to get through the hump or the situation or the tribulation that you were going through at the time. And when you get to heaven, you can rant and rave and be sad and be, and be crying to God and He'll say, look, that was the message for you, and you weren't even there, so don't come to me crying. Yeah. Amen. I've given you all that. I will guide you with mine eye. I will lead you. I will never forsake you. But I'm not going to chase you down the street. Right? right? Amen. If you think something's more important than hearing the Word of God, then don't blame God if you have trouble in your life. Yep. That's good. That's good. And that's how that works sometimes in Christianity. Proverbs 19, verse 20. Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Right? Are you wise in your latter end? Or are you still... And I'm please not trying to pick on anybody. I'm just using this as an example. Are you still as stupid as you were last year? Now, please, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but you know what we need to do? We need to not only get in this Word of God, but we need to listen to the instructions of God. And I can't stand up here behind this pulpit and tell you that it won't work. I can tell you it will work. The problem is doing it. Yeah. We are over... We are inundated. Is that a word, inundated? We are inundated with everything but the Bible. Right? Amen. Well, preacher, you don't understand. No, I don't. 
I don't even understand when I do it. How do you think I can understand when you do it? Well, I mean, when you put things more important than God. Because actually, what is more important than God? I can't think of anything. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Instruction, instruction, instruction. That's what we need to do. You know what God says? You need to get some a hold of some instruction. Here's how this works. You do this, and this won't happen. You do this, and this will happen. Well, Lord, I didn't understand. What part of thou shalt not don't you understand, right? You know how many thou shalt nots are in the Bible? Anybody have any idea? Maybe you ought to look them up. <laughs> so you quit doing the thou shalt nots. Getting mighty quiet in here. All right, where did we go? Proverbs 4 or Proverbs 8? All right, go to Proverbs 4. Look at verse 13. The Bible says, Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Look at chapter 8. Chapter 8 in the book of Proverbs. Look at verse number 10. Proverbs chapter 8, verse number 10, the Bible says, Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. Now I'm going to stop here just for a second, and if I'm talking to you, please, I'm not picking on you, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. It's better to go to church than it is to work overtime. Well, you don't understand, i got too many bills. Well, God didn't give them to you. You must have picked them up somewhere. I know how hard it is to get out of debt. I've been in debt too many times. But you know what I do know? The Bible says, Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. You know what you have in this church? I know for a fact. You have Sunday school. That means before the morning worship service, you're schooled in the Bible. That's like instructions. In case anybody didn't know what schooling was. And if you don't show up for schooling, guess what you do? You say, God, it's not worth it. Your instructions aren't worth it, God. I'd rather get an extra 20 minutes sleep. And yet you'll go to God when things are going the wrong way and you'll say, God, please help me. I wonder if God could ever get to the point where he'd say, why don't I help you as much as you help me? Why don't I do for you as much as you do for me? It'd be scary if that happened, wouldn't it? Look at Proverbs chapter 9. Proverbs chapter 9. The Bible says in verse number 9, Proverbs 9, verse 9, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. You know how you can be a wise man? Come to church and listen to the preaching. Well, I just can't come to church. Listen now, I understand there are certain times in our lives where we just cannot make it to church. But be, bare, be sure that there are very rare times. A priority in a Christian's life should be church first and everything else second. It's not that way, but that's the way it should be. A priority in a Christian's life should be, can I pray now or should I wait till later? What do you think the answer would be? I would say pray now, right? The Things about Christian is, should I read my Bible or should I read some novel? Well, I think I'll read the Bible. It just might happen. I'm not sure about this, but I'm just going to say, for example, maybe when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, he might say, well, did you read my book? 
And some Christians are going to go, well, uh, no, Lord, I didn't read the whole thing. What are you going to do when he says, why not? What excuse will you give him? I can't think of one, can you? Second Timothy chapter three, second Timothy chapter three. We said it looked at before, but let's look at it again. It was so good the first time. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three, look at verse number sixteen. Second Timothy chapter three, verse number sixteen. That would be right after first Timothy if you're looking for it. Second Timothy chapter three. Be the index under the twos. Second Timothy chapter three, verse number sixteen. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. So how are you going to be righteous? It's going to have to come from the scripture. How are you going to know how to behave? It's going to have to come from the Scripture. Amen. How are you going to know whether things are right or wrong? It's going to have to come from the Scripture. Whether you like what the Bible says or not doesn't change the fact that it's from God. Doesn't change the fact that it's true. You know what? There's some places in the Bible I don't like. I don't like them at all. <laughs> doesn't mean I shouldn't follow them. Right. Doesn't mean it's not true. I mean, if I had my choice, I wouldn't follow them. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Sometimes I don't want to be kindly affectionate one to another. But that's true enough what it says, isn't it? As much as is in you, live peaceably with all men. Some men I don't want to live peaceably with. I purposely want to be at war with them. But I'm just telling you what the Bible says. How are we doing so far? Isn't God good to us? Yeah, we say that, but do we mean it? Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1. Just when you thought it was safe. Joshua chapter 1. Look down there in verse number 8. I don't mean to go too fast through the scriptures here. And I apologize if I'm going too fast for you to keep up. I'm trying to go slow. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It's important for you to look at the scriptures at the same time and you read them while I'm pronouncing them <laughs> to make sure that I'm doing it right. right. Make sure that I'm not adding words to it or taking words away. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Is that what it says? Amen. Now, is there anybody in here who doesn't want to be a prosperous Christian? Anybody in here doesn't want to be a successful Christian? It tells you right there how to do it. And you know what we have right now in this country? We have Christians who are failing. They're failing their families, they're failing themselves, they're failing churches, they're failing God. Why? Because they're not paying attention to what God says. God says, look, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read the book and then try, please just try to do what it says. And when it's a struggle for you, I'll help you. Because some things are hard to do. You know what we have? We have flesh that surrounds us, don't we? You ever got victory over it? I haven't yet. I keep struggling with it. I keep fighting it down. Don't put no food in front of me. I'll just have to eat it. Is that how it is? You know what that is? That's the flesh. All right, go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, some instructions from God. He said, look, you want to be prosperous, you have good success, here's what you do. You read my Bible, you talk about my Bible, and then you try to do what my Bible says. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. I'll make you prosperous. I'll give you good success. It won't just be success. It'll be good success. Psalm 119 verse number 11. What does that say? Right? Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How much word do you have of God in your heart? If I was to give you a piece of paper, and please, I won't, but if I was to give you a piece of paper and say, please, write for me, write down now. In fact, don't even have to give me the address. Just give me all the verses that you have memorized. And just start writing them out. If you know the address, give me the address too. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Is that what David said? Was David a sinner? But whose heart was he after? He was after God's heart, wasn't he? Why? Because he tried to hide God's word in his heart. When he was caught in his sin, you know what the first thing he did? He asked God to forgive him and he admitted that he did it. He never argued with God. He never said, well, God, it wasn't my fault. Did he? He come right out and said, look, I'm the man. I'm the one that sinned against God. Whatever you do, God, don't take it out on them. Take it out on me. They, they just, they did what I said. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. We looked at it before, but look at Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. I know I'm going over some of these instructions that we went over before, but it's important to realize these are very important instructions. These are basic instructions. Basic Christianity. If we were going to college, this would be Christianity 101. The ones that don't know anything about Christianity have to take this course. Well, what do you mean? Well, it's for Christians who want to be Christians. Amen. Not like underwater basket weaving or, you know, something like important classes in college. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. There's not a Christian that I've ever met that hasn't known that verse and had that verse preached to them, and yet they don't understand it. Well, how do you know that, preacher? Because they don't do a thing the verse says. Are you sure about that? I've seen it over and over and over again. And I've even been guilty of it myself. I try to figure things out. I can't. God can. I don't know why things happen. Do you know why things happen the way they happen? I have no clue. Why all of a sudden is the United States in a drought? Drying up and blown away. Why? Because of global warming? I doubt it. Right? Is there something we've done against God? Is that the problem? Is that why we're having hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and floods and cows are... I mean, the corn is just falling over completely. Can't even use it to feed anymore. Just got to chop it up and use it for mulch. It's God. You can't mess with God. And I don't know why Christians can't understand. I can understand the world. They're lost. I can understand why they don't know. I can understand why we as Christians don't understand. It's God. God will only put up with so much. Amen. Right? God is not mocked, brothers and sisters of Christ. And you know what we've been doing for the last quote unquote age? We've been mocking Him. The church of the Laodiceans. We've just been mocking him, mocking him, mocking him. That's right, brother. Well, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. I don't know what the problem is. I take that back. I know what the problem is. I just don't know why. You know what I can do? I can read sixth grade English. And inside me, now that I'm saved, born again, washed in the blood, I have a Holy Spirit that is sealed inside there. And His job is to help me to understand the Scripture. But if I'm not reading it, 
How can I understand it? Well, I'm a slow reader. Well, then read slow. But read. God don't care how fast you read. God don't care if you just barely read a word or two. You keep at it, and God will keep at it, and pretty soon you'll be reading. And if you can't read, buy a tape of the Bible and listen to the tape and follow along. Pretty soon it'll come. It might only be the big, the little words at a, at a while, but every once in a while you may even pronounce them Jewish names. <laughs> All right, where'd we go? I know we went somewhere. Colossians 3, Colossians 3 verse, is it 2? Set your affection on things above. Is that verse 2? Right. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, right? Is that an instruction from God? Amen. How easy is that to follow? It's real hard, isn't it? You know why? Because everywhere you look, it's new and improved. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you need it. Because you know who else has one, and you don't want to be left out the cold. And if you buy it today, listen, if you buy it today, you won't even have to pay for it till 2007. <laughs> We want to make sure you get it. We're giving you a big discount. Set your affection on things above. You know what? What I like to see is I like to see God one time just say, for everybody to see, a pile of great treasure, gold, silver, precious stone. He said, all right, now you see that over there? Here's how you can get that. Go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, all services that there's at the church for a whole year. Read your Bible every day and pray to me three or four times a day. And that's all yours at the end of the year. Now, if we could see it with our eyes and lust after it with our hands, we might have a chance. But you know there would still be Christians that couldn't make it? Yeah, right. If God said, all right, here, I'm going to make it real easy on everybody. Let's, since we can't make it for a whole year, let's try a month. That's like only eight times, right? Four Wednesdays and four Sundays. Well, unless you have a meeting or something. But we'll give the world, we'll give the devil five days a week and we won't give God two? Uh -huh. Something's wrong with that picture. What we should be doing, and I haven't talked with your pastor about this, and he'll probably tell me about it later. But what we should be doing is we should go into our pastor and say, Look, how come we only have church twice a week? The world's getting five days, God's only getting two. Something's wrong here. Can't we meet a couple other times a day? I mean, can't we meet like on Mondays and Thursdays too? Maybe have a Bible study at church? I don't hear any volunteers. But you'll go, to, what will you go? Well, let's see. We'll go to the, uh, I know I'm going to step on toes, but on. I'm going to bed since I can leave tonight. Yeah. We'll go to the bingo. Oh, I know they don't do that in Missouri, but other states they do that. We'll go to the uh, quote-unquote theater. And you put the slash in there everywhere you want to go. Uh, we'll go to the uh Horse racing, dog racing, canoe racing, whatever kind of racing is going on, car racing, right? We'll do that as many times as they'd have it. Yeah. We'll go to the sports games. Come you on. pick the thing that you'll go to. Come on. That's good. Come on. Right? Yeah. Why would you go to that and not go to church? Well, you're not going to have to take it up with me. What you are going to have to take it up is with God. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. One of the problems that I've seen in my Christian life, and I saw it from the very beginning, I never could understand it, and I'm glad the Lord never did let me understand it. But I saw Christians who claimed to be Christians, who were quote-unquote strong Christians, and something would come up, 
And one thing that always came up that I noticed is somebody would come from out of town, let's say a, a relative or a friend, and they weren't there at church. And when the next time they were at church, they said, well, I was going to come, but I had visitors come from out of town. And my preacher, when I first got saved, he was about the same age as me. He was kind of crazy, too, like me. And he looked at me and he said, well, why didn't you bring them to church? Or why, if they didn't want to come to church, why didn't you come and just let them stay at your house? Didn't you trust them enough to stay at your house while you were gone? Now listen, look up here a minute. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just trying to give you examples of what God's going to ask you when you get to heaven. Because he's going to ask you, how come you miss church? You think God cares? Well, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Right. Isn't that what it says? Yeah. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Right? Amen. So is it important to go to church? Amen. I think it's important. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. One of the reasons that people are having a hard time finding God, they don't know where to look. And they're only kind of half looking. Now please, ladies, I'm not picking on you. I'm just giving you an example or using you as an illustration. And if this doesn't apply to you, well, praise God. But, I love that word, but. Sometimes when women look for things, they will look at the top of the dresser and say they can't find it. They haven't looked in any of the drawers. They haven't looked under the dresser or around the dresser. They just walked in the room, opened the door and said, well, it's not there. Now, do men do the same thing? Absolutely. That's just human nature. Let's do it the easy way. The least amount of trouble. Right? The problem with God is, His is always the easy way, and we're the ones that make it difficult. Because if we do it His way, which is always the right way, we'll never have to do it again. My father, who was lost and probably is in hell right now, used to tell me, if you're going to do a job, do it right the first time. Amen. That'll save you a lot of trouble. That's right. And you know what? That's true. If you do a partial job, you're going to end up coming back and finishing the job. And it's going to be harder the second time. I wish we could learn that. I wish I could learn that. All right, go to Psalm chapter 1. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, let's go to Psalm 1, then we'll go to Psalm 25. I better look at Psalm 1. I thought I had my memorized, but I'm not sure. Psalm 1. Now, brothers, I'm gonna, brothers and sisters, I'm going to give you a little hint here, a little clue, as they say. No charge for this clue. This is one of those freebies. You want to be a Christian? I mean, really. Do you want to be a Christian? Amen. You want God to bless you? Then you get into Psalm chapter 1, you memorize it, and you do exactly what it says. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. But the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know what God is telling us? Right, here's an example. Do what I say and you'll be prosperous. Do what I say and you'll be prosperous. Last verse tonight, Psalm chapter 25. Verse number 4. 
underline this one, hang it on your refrigerator, put it on your mirror, put it on your dash in your car, put it in the middle of your TV, whatever you look at the most. <laughs> put it on your computer screen. Proverbs 25, verse 4. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. That's a good place to stop. You know what we need to do? We need to go to God and say, God, please, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Because I want to go the right way. I want to go on the right path. Amen. In 1970-71, I was in the great country of Vietnam. Please, no clapping. And I was what is known as a ground pounder. For you people who don't know anything about that, I was infantry. I carried a machine gun. I didn't know at the time when I offered, to, when I quote unquote volunteered to carry it, that it was the worst thing I could have done. But nonetheless, I did carry it. Now, I was with an infantry squad, and sometimes there was two squads together, but we would go out in what was known as search and destroy missions. They take us out of a helicopter, they drop us up in some jungle someplace, and say, okay, three days later, here's where we want you to be. You either be there or you're going to be left behind. So we get at the map, we find out where we got to go. Three days, we get there. And anything we saw in between that, we would shoot and kill, right, and destroy. Well, every time we went anywhere, there was always a man in the front, and he was called the point man. And he was usually at least 20 yards ahead of everybody else, and sometimes even farther. And he would walk real slow, and he'd look around real carefully in case there was a booby traps, or things hanging from the trees, or things sticking out of the ground. And what he did is he always warned us if something was coming. That was his job. Brothers and sisters of Christ, Every one of us in this room is going through a war down here on this earth. It's a spiritual war. And we have a point man too. His name is Jesus Christ. If you don't follow him, you might run into a booby trap. You might run into a landmine. You might run into a bungee stick. You might run into an ambush. You need to follow the point man. Just like we did. We followed the point man. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Brothers and sisters of Christ, listen now. God has spent eternity getting things ready for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to care for you. He wants to guide you and teach you and show you the way to go. But He will not force you it has to be your decision your decision this night Lord I want to do your will Lord I want you to show me your paths teach me thy ways O Lord now with heads bowed and eyes closed why don't you where you sit or if you can get up to this altar get up to this altar and say God please Help me. I want to be a Christian. I don't want to just be saved. I want to be a Christian that pleases you, a Christian that loves you, a Christian that does what you say to do. Help me to understand, Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your long suffering to us, Word. Lord, I'm so glad that you just didn't drop me in my tracks the first time I didn't do what you said. But Lord, you're so full of mercy. Father, help me now to start being the Christian you want me to be. Not the Christian I think I should be, but the Christian you want me to be, Lord. I want to please you, Father. The Bible tells me when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Lord, help me to please you. And Lord, help each and every Christian in this building tonight that has the same desire. Teach us, Lord. Show us, Lord. Instruct us and guide us with your eye.
Father, I thank you and I praise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.